Do you drink any Pinot, Matt? No, oh, just a bit. A little beer in there. Yeah. <laughs> I think we drank a little bit last night, actually, here in the... A glass or two. Yes. Uh... Hey, everybody. It's Adam Lee from Siduri Winery. I'm here in the Santa Rita Hills in Santa Barbara County, welcoming Matt from Siduri and also Perry Kuhn. Perry runs a winery here in the area called Peak Ranch, but before that, Perry was a longtime wine retailer in Los Angeles, and he loves the Santa Rita Hills. In fact, we all do. So we're here going to introduce you to the wines from this fantastic growing area. We all find ourselves in Santa Rita Hills for different reasons. Uh, what's attracted you guys to Santa Rita Hills? I came from a background of high-end retail down in Los Angeles for about six years and got to try wines from all over the world. For the most part, I fell in love outside of California wines with Burgundy and the Northern Rhone, which of course are also regions that I definitely can't afford on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> you can do far worse, but yes, <laughs> financially. Yeah. But I have yeah, I developed expensive tastes, it was unfortunate. Finding regions that can mirror the quality and the, and the characteristics that I love about those wines was something that attracted me to the Santa Rita Hills. The 2000 vintage was my first vintage in Santa Rita Hills, and I met a guy, um, I met a guy online, that's probably not the right way to <laughs> phrase it necessarily. <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the Prodigy Wine Bulletin Board, a person was posting about a vineyard he was planting, and I came down to check it out, and I'm like, yeah, let's give it a shot down here. And it's also quite a small appellation. There are a lot of really upper echelon vineyards that are putting Santa Rita Hills on the map. John Sebastiano Vineyard, I mean, you're very familiar. That's a fantastic piece of property. That was one of the first vineyards I actually got to encounter when I first came up here. It's steep, it's aggressive, and it's kind of what you want out of a Pinot Noir region. And even between blocks, it's like completely different vineyards. The hillsides and the slopes and the parts of the valley floor, and there's uh, different clones and different soils. I mean, there is so much going on in that vineyard. It's ultra exciting. In Oregon, there is actually a limitation, is so you can't go any higher than this or any lower than that. Here in the Santa Rita Hills, it's pretty neat. I mean, you can have some very steep hillside places like John Sebastiano, and then you can have some lower land places, yet it all still works as Santa Rita. What do you find with the Pinots from Santa Rita here? Uh, there's a beautiful pop of the fruit, and it's buttressed by this uh, amazing richness. It has beautiful fruit and structure. I often kind of get that black tea or baseousness out of the Santa Rita Hills. I always kind of think it's one of its signature styles. There's a structure there because of how cool the growing season is. There's this misconception amongst the average consumer that because it's as far south as it is. People assume that it's warm and Pinot doesn't do well in the warm area without realizing that that east-west valley and opening to the Pacific makes it much cooler. Right, it's one of the coldest Appalachians in the country. This wine works well sitting around drinking it as is. I think it works especially well with food. Yeah, it's incredibly versatile. And bringing these wines from Santa Rita Hills to everyone is a pleasure. Yeah, and you're gonna have fun coming down here and you can put on the pounds that I have because of the food down here. Give yourself, you know, 25 years and you'll do the same thing, so. Well, we are underway. Yeah, exactly, we are. We met, I think, in Paso a few years ago at least. Yeah, you've had your fingers in every wine area pretty much. Uh, Caused all these gray hairs. Yeah. But yeah. I think the original connection that we actually started a big dialogue was when I came aboard Peak. I emailed the winemaker and said, hey, how do I get these wines? And he said, talk to Adam. It started off that whole chain reaction for me, ultimately managing Peak Ranch. So if things don't go well, is it my fault? Yes, absolutely. 100%. 100%. Directly responsible for all of this. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys.